I took my new Panasonic G85 out into Kuala Lumpur for the first time yesterday and that was quite an adventure as I was learning how to use this camera with all its fancy features and my new external microphone. It wasn't easy to be honest and I made a ton of mistakes and it turns out that the rumors are true. The focusing system when shooting video on this Panasonic is not very good so I had to do a lot of fumbling around to uh, figure out how to do it properly and I figured out a few other problems one is that the camera is a bit heavier than my old Olympus which means my uh, tripod that I use doesn't work very well so I need a sturdier tripod right now I'm using kind of a Joby mini uh, gorilla pod and one thing that happens is that the legs creak they make a creaking sound and that sound gets transmitted into the microphone and that was never a problem with my Olympus but it's a problem now so I want to get a new tripod so what I'm doing today is I'm heading to a camera store but I thought I'd turn it into a kind of a travel experience um, it's really just me running errands but this is my life right now so I might as well uh, bring the camera along. I'm heading to a camera store called YL Camera. It's located in uh, Petaling Jaya. As far as I can tell, they're the only camera store in town that carries this particular tripod, so I have to go there. So, I'm heading to Petaling Jaya, and along the way, we're going to fold in a five snack challenge, and it might even include another Ramley burger. I've wanted to try another one, and there is a Ramley Burger outlet at the Tamanjaya LRT station, and that's where I'm getting off the uh, LRT line. So maybe my first snack of the day will be lunch, and that will be a Ramley Burger. So let's head into the uh, Pasarseni LRT and get this day started. For those that don't know this, uh, Pedaling Jaya is started off as kind of a, uh, a suburb of Kuala Lumpur. It was actually established by the British a long time ago when Kuala Lumpur got a bit overpopulated and they decided to start a new settlement there and uh, open up a new place where people could live. So in a way it is uh, Malaysia's first planned city. And uh, in 2006 it actually became an official separate city. It was always a separate town but it attained city status in 2006 and today I think it has a population of six or seven hundred thousand people so it's uh, for all intents and purposes I think of it as part of Kuala Lumpur I've actually been there a number of times but technically it is a separate city and um, I saw when I was looking at Google Maps that there's actually a Petaling Jaya Museum at the Taman Jaya Park and I might stop off there on my way to the camera store or on the way back and learn a bit more about pedaling Jaya. Staying with the technical theme of cameras and uh, all my changes with the Panasonic G85, another problem I discovered is that the batteries don't last nearly as long in the Panasonic as they did in my Olympus. So I think I have to buy a third battery at least, maybe even a fourth one, to get me through a full day. Another issue I'm facing with my new camera setup, it has nothing to do with this particular Panasonic, except that I've added an external microphone, which I've never used before. And the weird thing for me about this is that it works fine when I'm facing the camera like this, because it's a directional microphone and it's currently directed at me. But if I turn the camera around and face it away from me, the microphone doesn't pick up my voice anymore. I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. I'll keep talking and uh, turn the camera around. So now I'm turning the camera around and I'm facing it away from me and you probably can't hear my voice anymore. And when I turn it back, now you should be able to hear my voice again. So I don't know how other people do this with directional microphones. In my case, what I've been doing is when I hold the camera like this, it's fine. And then when I turn it around, I actually flip the microphone so it's facing in the other direction. 
but that's a real pain to do and I haven't got a good system yet plus I often forget to do it and I end up talking and talking and talking and I don't actually record my voice so I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, to incorporate this external microphone into the way that I use the camera no one else seems to have this problem so I'm not sure what it is I'm doing differently so it's another reason to go to the camera store maybe they have some suggestions for me and since I'm riding on the Kalana Jaya LRT line and I have my new camera with awesome stabilization just for fun I'm gonna try to get into the front of the train again and shoot video out the front window and uh, see if that looks uh, any different from when I did this with my Olympus a little fun project for the day it turns out the train was super crowded and there were two people in the front window already recording video so I guess it's a popular thing to do I'm going to wait until the uh, next train comes and see whether I can get into the front window and I thought I'd record here in a very noisy environment just to see if uh, the microphone can handle it how did I sound something I've noticed that this camera seems to do very well and I'm really pleased with is that it just naturally handles backlit situations well so like right now there's a lot of bright light behind me but from what I've seen in the video it exposes my face quite nicely I mean it overexposes the background in order to maintain this exposure but that's kind of what I want a lot of cameras would do this poorly and my face would be really dark and you wouldn't be able to see anything because it tries to even out light over the whole scene but this Panasonic seems to be uh, handling backlighting very well so I'm pleased with that Tamanjaya station and from here I can walk to my uh, camera store it took about 14 or 15 minutes to go the six stops from Pasarseni to here and I shot a video the whole way using the awesome stabilization of my new camera to see how that uh, turned out I thought I could start my day right with a healthy Ramley burger as my first snack of the day there's supposed to be a Ramley burger uh, outlet at the Tamanjaya LRT station at least it's listed but I couldn't find it it's just not there it must be one of those Ramley burger stalls that only comes out at night there's supposed to be 25,000 of them and yet uh, I never see them anywhere so I think they're all hiding during the daytime and they only come out at night and uh, I'm not out at night very often so maybe I don't see so many Ramley burgers it should be obvious by now that I think a lot about technology and I think about it mainly from the terms of uh, from the perspective of usability and one thing I find is that uh, the big companies that make cameras and uh, computers and all these things they often try to give consumers these huge monster features like 
our new camera can shoot 55 pictures every millisecond or where you can take pictures of the moon. All these big fancy features that they can use to sell the product. But they miss out on all these tiny little things that actually mean a whole lot more when it comes down to using the camera. And uh, this occurred to me because I realized that uh, this Panasonic has a feature that I really, really like. On my Olympus, when you press the button to start recording, you would hear a beep. And when you stopped recording, you press the button again, you hear another beep. But you often get confused because you don't know whether you've turned it on or turned it off because the sound for on and off is exactly the same. So quite often I've gone through, you know, long periods of time where I was recording by turning the camera on and off, but I had the rhythm backwards so I was turning it off when I wanted to record and back on when I didn't want to record. The Panasonic has a very subtle difference. When you push the button to start recording, you get one beep. When you turn it off, it beeps twice. And it's an amazing feature that made a huge difference to how I'm shooting video because I always know I hear one beep, I'm now recording. I hear two beeps, recording has stopped. It's a very simple feature and uh, makes a huge difference, probably costs nothing to build it into the camera, but it adds a whole lot of value, far more value than the big features that they think are so important. However, and this is a pretty big however, both my Olympus and this Panasonic are missing one feature that would be incredibly useful. What I really need is something on the front of the camera, just a tiny little red light or a green light that's a blinking to tell me when I'm recording video. So then I could just look at the light, it's blinking, ah, I'm recording. I turn it off, the light is not blinking anymore, I know it's not recording. So just having a little indicator at the front would be a huge thing and yet almost no cameras have it. I can't think of one camera off the top of my head that uh, has that feature. Which is kind of odd. The scene right here struck me as kind of funny because if you've watched any of my videos before you probably know by now that I like to walk everywhere if I can. Either walk or ride a bike. And it's a lonely life as a pedestrian in Kuala Lumpur. So here I am walking to the camera store. But look where I am. Look at the whole highway system behind me there. Massive road system in this direction. Massive highways in that direction. More road system behind me. It's like, I'm like a, I don't know, it's like a, a, a single walking person in the middle of a massive sea of highways, traffic, and cars. At least here, there is actually a sidewalk that I'm walking along, so that's great. But even if you're walking here, you sort of feel like you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. It's something very unusual. And I can understand that because, to be honest, no sane person would be walking right now. It's way too hot. But uh, yeah, I'd like to walk, even if it's hot. I love these things though. You know, these are separate, dedicated lanes for motorcycles and scooters. And these are amazing. Um, I have never ridden a motorbike here, but when I was living in Taipei in Taiwan, they had a lot of these and riding my scooter there and taking these uh, dedicated uh, pathways. It was just a lot of fun and really convenient once you have figured them out. This is only my second time using this uh, Panasonic like this in my normal day-to-day -day life exploring Kuala Lumpur. And it's interesting how much I'm already changing the way that I'm using it. I mean, one of the reasons I bought this camera or bought a new camera was I really wanted one of those flip out LCD screens so I could see myself in the screen to make sure everything is framed properly. It seemed really important for a lot of reasons. But when I was using that screen yesterday, my first time, it just confused the heck out of me because I kept looking at the screen to confirm whether I was in focus or not, confirm that I was recording, you know, all these things. And then I ended up talking to myself looking at the LCD screen. 
I couldn't break that habit. And I really worried about the screen as well because it's sticking out so far to the side as you're walking along, if you're not, if you're holding the camera at your side, it could hit your leg, could hit a fence post, hit another person and could snap off, you know? So I was worried about it all the time. I was looking at it all the time. And with my Olympus, I didn't even have a screen like that. So I never worried about it. So now I find with the uh, Panasonic today, I haven't even bothered using it. I just uh, turned it around in its normal position and I, I don't have it flipped out to the side and it doesn't bother me at all. It's got a wide angle lens, so I'm more or less in the frame. I may not be perfectly in the frame, but that's okay. I might be in focus, I might not be. Eh, who cares? You know, life will go on if I'm not perfectly sharp at this moment. You know, eventually the camera will get me back in focus at some point. Life's too short to worry so much about focus. My little baby Panasonic, it's okay. I was worried about how I was going to get across this uh, busy road, but they have a handy pedestrian bridge for me. So, I just have to uh, cross over and then at that corner I turn right and I think that'll take me to YL Camera. It's been so long, probably forgot where I was going. Almost, I almost forgot where I was going. Crossing the pedestrian bridge. And in this case, because I'm pointing the camera forward, I flip the microphone around so that you can hear me. I'm doing something else differently today as well. Yesterday, I was really trying to maximize the focusing modes. Boy, it's noisy here. I'll be amazed if you can hear me. But what I was doing was when I was filming like this, I was using the tracking mode. So every time I looked at myself, I had to look at the LCD screen, touch my face, and lock the tracking. But then every time I turned the camera around, I had to change to another focusing mode. And I found this really distracting and really confusing, and I kept making mistakes. I might get the best focus that way, but it was a real chore doing it. So today I put it in, uh, face and eye detect mode and I just left it there the whole time hoping that basically focusing will work out it will lock on my face most of the time and then when I point it at other things maybe it will focus properly as well it's just a lot easier to use one focusing mode and leave it there rather than switching all the time it was just way too much it just got uh, way too confusing and the other big change of course is uh, audio and uh, I'm still not sure what I'm doing there. My Panasonic has audio controls built into it. I can turn clipping limiters on or off. I can adjust the uh, recording decibel level. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I did a whole bunch of tests and I thought minus six dB was the best setting. And my voice sounded okay, but I found it a bit flat. With my old Olympus, there was a huge amount of background noise and hiss but my voice was really crystal had a vibrant trebly sound and I'm finding with this microphone my voice is much more isolated but I'm finding it a bit flatter not quite as bright so still playing around with the uh, audio settings to see what works out best <laughs> well I have reached some kind of a massive uh, shopping center called uh, Plaza 33 and uh, yeah there's the name of it there Plaza 33 and my camera store is somewhere inside this complex but I don't know exactly where so we're gonna have to do some uh, rummaging around here to find it I don't know whether it's in this building or in a building over here well, some success. I found the building that YL Camera is located in. You can probably see it behind me there. And I'm gonna go in and uh, try to find this new tripod that I'm interested in. Yeah, I don't really know if I need it per se, but it can do a lot of things that my Joby Gorillapod can't do. 
it'd be nice to have as an option. You can see, you can probably see how much I'm sweating. It was a long and hot walk to get here. Let's go uh, look for that tripod. I just left the shopping center and uh, YL camera. And I hate to say it, but my shopping mission was a failure. I knew in advance that they had the tripod I was looking for. They, they sell this particular model. But when I showed up, it turned out they only carried one color. The bright, bright crimson neon red version is the only one that they had. I asked about the black one, which is what I want. And I heard the two most dreaded words in the retail shopping, no stock. So, yeah, no stock. They checked the other two YL outlets and they don't have it in stock either. And uh, I have to say the same thing about my five snack challenge today. It's not only a failure, it's actually so bad, I think I'm going to have to cancel it altogether. I mean, you can probably see around me where I am, there's nothing here. This is a suburban wasteland. There are no snack shops, no cafes, there's no food or drinks anywhere around here. I haven't passed a single snack of any kind in the, all the distance from the LRT to the shopping mall. So no five snack challenge today. I had one other mission for today, and that was to visit the Petaling Jaya Museum. And uh, I believe it's down in here somewhere in the Tamanjaya Park. So I'm gonna head down into this park and walk around the lake for a minute, get away from all of this crazy loud traffic and uh, see if I can find the museum and see if it is open. With my luck in these matters, it will probably be closed, but we can only find out by going there. Ah, oh, that's better. Found a way down to the park. Nice and quiet down here, very relaxed. A little bit cooler too, because you get a little bit of a cool breeze off the water. I think I found the Petaling Jaya Museum and this statue is at the front of it. Kind of a bizarre little statue with stars shooting out of people's fingertips. And I think this is the uh, museum building over here. Let's go see if it is open to the public or open at all. And if proof were needed that my five snack challenge is a complete bust, I found this vending machine at the museum and I thought, ah, oh, finally, I can get a nice cold drink. But when you investigate, you get the sign, sold out. And every single drink of every variety <laughs> is sold out. Nothing here that you can get. But I think the museum is open, so let's go inside. This is a funny part of the display. They have a series of boots from the police department that they would lock onto cars when they were uh, parked illegally. I guess these are two of the older designs. And uh, this one looks like a, a medieval design here. And these guys are the ones who would lock your car up so you couldn't get away. I don't know what this has to do with Petaling Jaya in particular, 
but it seems to be an entire room of old tops, like wooden spinning tops that uh, children would use uh, as a toy. And I'm guessing that the name of the local football team is the Spiders. Why else would there be a, a giant spider attacking this uh, football player? Oh, up on the wall there I see it says a Black Widow. So I guess that is the name of their uh, football team. And in case anyone wants to visit this museum, there's the operating hours, 9 to 5 every day, but closed on every Friday and public holiday with a free entrance. But if you're thirsty, bring your own drinks because the vending machine will likely be uh, out of stock. Just like my tripod, I'm having an out of stock day. Everything is uh, no stock. I suppose I should give a little summary of my visit to the Petaling Jaya Museum. I guess the basic idea of the museum is to show the history of the place as well as uh, its potential for commercial development, perhaps to make it more uh, attractive to investors and if companies want to, uh, you know, establish a base here and stuff like that. And the basic information I got was kind of what I read online before I came here that uh, back in like 19 in the 40s and uh, 1950 Kuala Lumpur was getting uh, quite crowded and they were looking for uh, new places to settle people and this area was an old rubber plantation and there were no uh, mining deposits here to speak of there's nothing uh, you know valuable in the ground to be mined so it was land that they could turn into residential settlements uh, quite easily and they divided the whole region up into plots of land, quite large ones, and sold them to people at a very reasonable, very low price to encourage people to move here. And one of the main attractions of this area is that it sits in between Kuala Lumpur and the coastal city of Klang. So it's right on the major uh, highway transportation routes, and that's what drives a lot of the uh, growth of uh, Petaling Jaya. And from my brief experience walking around, I can attest to that. This is a area for cars, as always, uh, not really for someone like me to be walking around in. Yeah, it's a very simple uh, museum, more like an archive for the municipality to keep records of its history. And uh, yeah, some interesting things in there, like the little room of children's toys, the tops. I thought that was interesting because I had a top exactly like that when I was a child. I think my father brought it back from the Netherlands when he went there on a holiday, and it was a traditional toy of children in the Netherlands. So how, uh, it's interesting that the, uh, have the same toy here in uh, Malaysia. Anyway, that's the end of my visit to the museum. Gonna head to the LRT station and back into Kuala Lumpur. And as I said, no five snack challenge. I've given up on that. And look what I found, a mobile Ramley Burger outlet. But I have no idea whether it's operational. It's certainly not open right now. <laughs> I imagine it uh, opens later tonight, if at all. Ramley Burger. And that is it. I'm back at Passarseni, back at my home my home away from home and a not very successful day no tripod no snacks nothing except sort of a uh, you know interesting municipal museum about Petaling Jaya and with that it comes uh, the end of another day and another video and I'll see you in the next one as I keep learning more about my new camera and hopefully things get better and better
See you next time. The bonus question for the last video was about Little India in Brickfields. I asked you, why is Brickfields called Brickfields? Well, in the late 1800s, Kuala Lumpur nearly burned to the ground, and then it was hit by huge floods. The government at the time declared that houses could no longer be built out of thatch and wood. Instead, they said that all houses had to be built out of bricks. Capitan Yapa Loy bought a large piece of land where there was a lot of clay, and he established a big factory for making bricks. Other Capitans followed suit, and soon there were a number of brick-making kilns all over this area. That is where Little India is located today, and that area is now called Brickfields. The bonus question for this video is about the Petaling Jaya Museum. In the museum there is a display, a diorama of a market scene, and in that display the market seller is using a very old traditional calculating device. What is that device called? Put your answer in the comments below. Answer at the end of the next video. And now I have it set to F22. I wanted to see if that makes a big difference to the pulsing in the background and whether it makes it easier to focus on my face or anything like that. Um, I'm assuming it's still in face and eye auto detect, though I don't really know that for sure. I've lost all track of the settings on this camera. So is the background pulsing? Travel tip 35. Don't forget about the yellow fever vaccination. When you prepare for a trip, you will likely uh, go to see your doctor or to a travel clinic to see about getting all of your health vaccinations updated. And you're probably thinking about diseases like malaria, meningitis, cholera, typhoid, dengue fever, but one disease a lot of people forget about is yellow fever. And yellow fever is a special case and you should ask your doctor about it. Yellow fever is uh, important because a lot of countries won't let you in unless you have proof that you have a yellow fever vaccine. This is particularly important if you are coming from a country that is known to have yellow fever risk inside it. So you might be going to a country like Germany where you know there is no risk of yellow fever, but if you're coming from a country, say in sub-Saharan Africa or parts of South America where there is yellow fever, the officials in Germany might ask to see your yellow fever documentation. And this is usually called, or sometimes it's called a yellow card. Here is mine here and this yellow card is an official document from the doctor that proves that you have a yellow fever vaccine. So when you are planning your next trip and getting all of your vaccinations, don't forget about yellow fever and make sure you get your yellow card. <laughs>